YouTube, what's good? Send you back at it again with another video. So for today, I bring you an updated crossbow and daggers build. This build is actually going to be done a bit differently because we will be using max roll and you'll probably hear me say it a couple of times in this video. However, I figured if I was going to bring you a professional build, then I'm going to bring it in a professional manner. So again, this is an updated crossbow and daggers build. This build for the key points are going to basically convey some high burst damage very high sustained dps it's going to show you exactly what pieces of gear you need fully traded as well as your stats you're going to get an updated damage rotation guide and you are going to get brief explanations as to why some abilities in the game do not work the way that you think they do and why this very much might as well be the best crossbow and dagger setup that we have currently in the game so without further ado let's go ahead and let's get into the gearing Alrighty, we are at the gearing section now welcome to max roll gg this is basically where i am going to upload all of my builds for the future and this is where you're going to see a lot of my builds pretty much residing outside of youtube so if you do not happen to have access to youtube at the time or maybe you just don't want to go back to go watch the videos you can very easily come to max roll the link will be in the description of this video and you will be able to find my entire build guide up there now this is basically going to cover your early game, your mid game, your early end game, and your maxed end game build. This is going to make it so that when you do happen to invite a new player, or maybe you just need to start a new character and you need a guide, you're going to be able to come here and get everything that you need to get from point A to point B. Uh, point B being early end game because no one's going to reach my maxed end, uh, my maxed end game setup until you get one specific thing, and that's if you're looking to go as far as I'm going. In most cases, the early end game setup is gonna be your final setup with probably a few replacements and I'll go over that when we get to that. So for the early game, you have your stat points over here. This is ideally what you're gonna get around uh, just for the early game. And all of this gear is either going to drop from open world or selection chest. You don't need to fully trade it. It's green gear. We don't need to be crazy here, but if you want to do that, you can. And I give you some recommendations as to what you can use for the early game. For the mid game 30 to 50 this is mainly set up for 50 so that when you get to rank 50 you can see exactly where you should be sitting at stat wise and this is also going to give you a ton of gear yet again that you are going to be able to very easily get and this is going to also show you the traits that you need to get by either fully trading your gear getting duplicates from the auction house or getting lucky during farming and these are the stats on the right hand side that are going to show you exactly how much of your critical hit chance, your melee critical hit chance, your attack uh, speed, buff duration, cooldown speed. <laughs> Look at the amount of health and max mana that you have with this setup. Like, I'm making sure that you are set because if I'm going to play the exact same build, then I want to do damage. And if I want to do damage, then I know you guys want to do damage. So this is going to make sure that you are not only able going to be surviving, but you're going to do damage. Now for the early end game setup, whoo -wee, for the early end game setup, we are cooking. Now this is where it's going to get tough because for the most part, this is literally a copy and paste of the current build that I'm running. Everything from bottom to top, this is literally what I'm running and these are my stats. So the only difference is that I'm not fully traded. So I'm not at 36, I'm at like 27, I think because I'm not fully traded. If I were fully traded, everything rank nine, this would be my current combat score. However, I'm not fully traded and not everything is rank nine. This is exactly where I'm going. And this is pretty much what you're gonna be using to keep up with me if you want to uh, copy and paste the build. Down here, you can see you have an insane amount of crit hits and a nasty heavy attack chance for crossbows and daggers. Since we don't really have any kind of passives or skills that natively boost our heavy attack chance, this is really good like this is really good because we're using offhand attacks offhand attacks since they have their own instance of damage you can consider this doubled when your offhand attack uh procs which means instead of 31 percent for your melee heavy attack you actually have 62 percent which is why this is so insanely high buff duration cooldown speed attack speed keep in mind there are hidden stats because you have cleaving moonlight that can give you an additional 15 percent attack speed so realistically none of these stats are fully where they will be because you have things like selfless diffusion which gives you uh, more cooldown speed so 
you have some insanely high stats with this build and most of this is very easy to get you have three dungeon weapons i mean three dungeon items in the Quirius's daggers the crossbows the supreme devotion cloak pretty much everything outside of the phantom wolf mask is very easy to get i would say that the hardest thing to get in this entire early game setup is in fact this mask and if you can't get this mask then you would just keep the same mask that you have here until you are able to get this mask and then you'll be pretty much good to go when you get to the end game the end game end game setup <clears throat> you're looking at this this monster of a build right here good lord you're looking at queen bellandir's toxic spine throwers along with your phantom wolf breaches and your class of the conqueror you have an insanely high 17 percent movement speed your weakened chance is going up by 248 your stun chance is pretty pretty good you have movement speed i mean um attack speed you have your mana cost efficiency your buff duration is still at 42 percent you did lose a bit of cooldown speed which is okay because you're using selfless diffusion you lost a little bit of crit which is fine because your heavy attacks are still the same and keep in mind dots and poisons can proc from heavy attacks that's why i'm using this as soon as i get it because this means that when the poison procs it's a very good chance that the poison can proc twice and because i have offhand hits you can pretty much keep this up 100 percent of the time because you have an insanely high crit chance keep in mind the way that the values work when they're flat numbers like this is uh one percent per every 10 so for this you would effectively have over 100 percent crit chance against an enemy that basically has no kind of crit resistance that is nutty to even think about that is why you see so many yellow numbers when people are using crossbows because if an enemy has no kind of critical hit resistance you effectively have over 111 percent crit chance against that target you're not going to miss a crit and if those enemies have no heavy attack chance then you effectively have anywhere from 16 percent to hit a heavy attack or 31 percent on a single hit however you have offhand attacks which means you in fact have 32%, 44%, or 62% chance to hit a heavy attack. So, now that you guys have seen the gear, we are heading to the skill section. And then once we head to the skill section, we will then go ahead and head over to the guardian, and then your skills, and then the testing section to show you guys exactly how you're gonna do your testing. So, for the skills very quickly we have quick fire with the consecutive use uh, consecutive use with the minimum chain fire and the damage increase conversion kit you are going to be using brutal uh, brutal incision with the thunderous bombing conversion kit and cooldown reduction you have nimble leap with consecutive use and cooldown reset selfless diffusion with no conversion kits because again it's pve you just want it for the cooldown mortal mark and the reason why we're using mortal mark over detonation mark is purely because you get more damage out of mortal mark due to mortal mark functioning the same way that umbra focus focus uh functions so if you're unfamiliar with umbral spirit or focus the way that this works is that whenever you use a melee ability while umbra spirit umbral spirit is active if you happen to hit a melee critical it will deal additional damage on its own that is literally copy and paste it to mortal mark except it's 10 times better because when you cast mortal mark mortal mark can stack and the additional hits don't require you to have to hit a crit so not only are you going to have an instantaneous amount of burst damage when mortal mark ends but the entire time mortal mark is copying your damage it's also dealing additional damage for every single hit that you deal while mortal mark is active versus trying to get crits now if you have a high critical hit value that doesn't matter regardless you're going to hit crits anyway but for those of you that may not have a high critical hit value this is way better for all of your range uh for all of your attacks in general because this works on every single attack then you have mana exchange with effect boost weak point shot let me briefly explain how weak point shot works and why i'm using weak point shot currently a lot of people on the last iteration of this build were hollering to the moon that i was losing damage because i wasn't using weak point shot now while i knew that wasn't the case i chose to 
just humor them for a bit and test it out and yet again i was proven right uh you do not gain any kind of damage buff by using weak point shot unless you use it in a specific manner now for those of you that do not understand how weak point shot works the way that this works as you can see is that it requires you to use it during an enemy's fury attack for those of you that don't know what a fury attack is a fury attack is indicated by an enemy's purple ring, meaning you need to perfect parry or dodge. If an enemy is not doing that and you use weak point shot, you're not getting that critical damage buff, which makes it absolutely useless. So in my personal humble opinion, I don't care how much base damage it does because weak point shot is not going to match up to fatal stigma. Fatal stigma gives you an insane amount of burst damage on top of extra damage on top of extra damage. So, what I see weak point at is a utility ability, but the only reason this is even going to be useful is if you're in a fight with an enemy that has a ton of fury attacks. If you're not in a fight with an enemy that's not using a ton of fury attacks, this is not useful at all. And I would highly recommend that instead of you running weak point shot, you replace this with fatal stigma. However, I'm still testing it because there might be something bugged about it and I don't know. And I'm trying to make use of the expand conditions to see if the fury passive that it has for the critical damage can proc off of expand conditions so i'm actively sacrificing my damage which you're going to see in the damage testing later on by using weak point shot and we still get an insanely high amount of damage which is crazy so we have mother nature's protest and we are using the lightning arrow which you can use any one of these arrows especially if you decide to set it up with some kind of unique synergy it's not that bad I just choose to use lightning right now because of the weather and I'm really testing it to see if I like this or Gale better. We have knife throwing, no conversion kits, and then we have inject venom with the lightning infusion conversion kit, frenzied sword dance. Let me briefly explain why I'm using this because again a lot of people were confused as to why I was using frenzied sword dance. Frenzied sword dance is an insane damage ability for daggers and just damage overall. The reason why is because if you're using dagger and crossbow, there's a lot of abilities that proc off of you needing to use a mobility uh, skill. The main issue is that there's not too many of those available, but Frenzy Sword Dance, which unfortunately is only available once you hit level 50, is probably the best ability. Here's why. For most people, they will read the ability and they'll automatically think that this weapon or weapon, this ability is only going to deal the 190% base damage for the entire ability. The way that this works is that you will attack three times if you have the Mad Sword Dance Conversion Kit and those attacks will be relegated to the enemy that you're targeting. So they won't just randomly spread out, which means you can control when these go off and how they go off. Now, what this means is that if you're taking a rank 3 version, which is the version that I have, and you're using that on a target, when you do use this ability because it counts as a melee, a mobility, a dagger, and an attack skill, it can, in fact, benefit from offhand attack chance, heavy attack chance, critical damage, and it will proc all of your passives for Laquarius's daggers and all of your melee um, mobility passives. So. For the first instance when you cast this ability because picking mad sword dance allows you to cast it twice it will hit three times in a single instance dealing 170 percent of the base damage per swipe keep in mind each one of those swipes can offhand and it can heavy attack and it can crit which means you could technically get off up to six hits which would net you quadruple damage just on one instance of casting mad sword dance so for a brief example, because I have it at rank 3, if I hit Mad Sword Dance and Mad Sword Dance hits 3 times, that is 170% base damage 3 times. So for one instance, you're looking at 510% bonus damage that you're getting, uh, base damage, excuse me, that you're getting just from using one instance of Frenzy Sword Dance. If you do two instances of Frenzy Sword Dance, your total damage output for Mad Sword Dance is 1020% of your total base damage. Keep in mind, this could be quadrupled because of the fact that you can in fact get heavy attacks off, offhand attacks, and all of this can crit. That is why Mad Sword Dance is stupidly strong out the gate. That's why you don't see it getting any buffs or any nerfs because it's really good where it's at. You just need to understand how the ability works and the utility that it can provide. It's going to keep all of your mobility passes up, especially if you use it with a Cleaving Moonlight combo. It's going to proc Aquarius's daggers 
and on top of all of that it just deals a stupid amount of damage so we're using the frenzy sword dance with the mad sword dance conversion kit now that you have seen all of these let's go ahead and look at the masteries again you can basically run the entire bottom roll for your crossbows and then you can honestly stop at calm aim which is where i stop at uh currently but that's just because i don't have the points to get to cold vision and then once you uh have all of your masteries done for your crossbows and your daggers which again you can get your daggers all the way through the bottom here and then come all the way up to uh sorrowful silence uh sorrowful silence you're pretty much good to go at that point you just want to rank up your abilities and then you can go ahead and get your passives which are going to be destructive fang nature's power ambidexterity piercing strike bloodlust assassin's instincts wrathful edge and shadow walker now shadow walker is what i like to consider a flex spot you can replace this with whatever kind of ability you want it's kind of personal preference if you feel like you don't really need the defense or the evasion and you don't really pvp much you can replace it with murderous energy especially if you happen to have queen belladere's bows if you're one of those lucky guys out there then you could put on murderous energy and get even more uh, poison damage from those bows you could replace it with corrupt nail to have a higher weakened chance there's a lot that you can do here there's a lot of flexibility i just choose to have this for the additional uh evasion in case my tank is trash Alrighty, this dummy has 900 k hp so what we're going to do is show you exactly how to do the rotation and you're going to see how much damage you're going to do over one for rotation and two for rotations. So keep in mind, I'm actually doing two things to sacrifice damage here so that you can see how much raw damage you're going to get, which will give you an idea of how much damage you're going to get when you are fully buffed. I have no food. There are no kind of potions enhancing my DPS. Keep in mind, I'm actually using weak point shot in this test because a lot of people do use weak point shot in a group setting. But I find it highly unreliable due to not a lot of enemies currently in the game using Wrath Attacks or Fury Attacks. And on top of that, Fatal Stigma is going to get you a lot more damage considering the fact that you can actually scale Fatal Stigma higher. So I'm actively taking two measures to sacrifice damage here to show you how much damage you're actually going to get with raw DPS. So, over one full rotation, we hit 776k, and keep in mind, I actually botched that rotation. <laughs> I botched the rotation, and even still, with botching the rotation, look at how much damage we pulled just with that. So now we're going to do the full rotation again, but we're going to do it twice over and show you how much damage you're going to get with two full rotations. <laughs> Now this is the second iteration of the rotation. So we went from, what was it, 700 and something HP? to 447k but with the full rotation we went from nearly one mil all the way down to 447k so now you've seen how to actually perform this rotation you've seen the infographic of how to actually take this rotation in priority you now know the gear you now know exactly what you need to do in order to actually survive in the end game and hopefully you enjoyed the video make sure you guys leave a like if you happen to enjoy the content on this channel then subscribe and continue you know maybe stick around a little bit and i will catch you guys in the next one take it easy